seated in the theater today are family and friends who have, in many different ways, supported these candidates to reach the goal represented by this ceremony. And on the platform are the college faculty and staff who have motivated, encouraged, and inspired these students as they completed their coursework and their college experience. And before us are the candidates for graduation who've become good friends, mentors, and colleagues, developing relationships that will serve them well as they move into the future together. We join then as members of an extended support network to celebrate our involvement with these candidates and to witness their accomplishment. And that celebration now begins. Presiding over the commencement ceremony is the president of the Pennsylvania College of Technology, Dr. Davy Jane Gilmore. Good afternoon. Now seriously. Good afternoon. Thank you. Good afternoon, soon to be graduates of the Pennsylvania College of Technology, families and friends. On behalf of the administration, the faculty and the staff at Penn College, I welcome you to the commencement ceremonies for the class of 2017. Spring is a time of refurbishment and rebirth and renewal, in particular in the natural world. And I must say that I feel rejuvenated every May when I have the pleasure of shaking the hands of hundreds of newly minted graduates from Penn College. As you cross the stage in this beautiful theater, you are eager to embark on your new journeys and life's new adventures. It is a privilege for me, and it is a privilege I've enjoyed for nearly two decades as president of this institution. It is a ritual, a rite of passage for students that I've never taken for granted. Your minds are probably racing now with thoughts of your impending celebrations, thoughts of reconnecting with your families and friends who have supported you along the way, and thoughts that sometimes can be overwhelming, a little bit of uncertainty that accompanies a new venture whether it's your new career opportunity or continuing your education. I encourage you to revel in the day, revel in the celebrations and the uncertainties alike. Take nothing for granted. Years from now, you will look back on these milestone moments and you'll remember them with special fondness. The Penn College community joins your family and friends in celebrating your achievements and in recognizing what they signal for your prospects in life. Penn College's degrees that work can serve as a passport for secure employment, but the particulars of the journey are mostly up to you. I have faith in your commitment and service and in your resolve. We look forward to the countless contributions that you will make in the days and the years to come, and that future begins now. So savor this occasion, and please remember to share your thoughts and your pictures on hashtag PCTGrad. Now this is the time when most college presidents are telling everyone to please silence your phones and turn them off for the dignity of our service. I'd like to tell you that our service will be dignified, but this is Penn College of Technology, and we expect you to take pictures and capture the moments that are happening this afternoon. So let me begin by taking the first one. Thank you. I'd like to now introduce Mr. Elliot Strickland, Chief Student Affairs Officer. <laughs> President Gilmore, Mr. DeRamo, Provost Starkey, distinguished faculty and staff, family, friends, and most importantly, the May 2017 graduating class. It is my great pleasure this afternoon to introduce your student commencement speaker, Robert Wood. <laughs> Rob came to Penn College with a lifetime of experience, work experience in numerous bars and restaurants along the East Coast, eight years of experience in the Marine Corps, where he literally saw the world with a focus in logistics and planning and in recruiting. 
and an Associate of Applied Science and Culinary Arts from Brookdale Community College in Asbury Park, New Jersey. With all that experience, you'd think that Rob might just be on cruise control at this point. Well, you'd be wrong. Robert packed everything he possibly could into his two years at Penn College. Internships with Aramark at UPMC Susquehanna and at the Kentucky Derby at Churchill Downs and a position in Penn College's own fine dining restaurant, Lejeune Chef. He also maintained a level of work inside the classroom that is rare, earning a perfect 4.0 GPA. Today, Robert graduates summa cum laude with a Bachelor of Science in Culinary Arts and Systems. Please welcome your 2017 student commencement speaker, Mr. Robert E. Wood. Thank you, Mr. Strickland, for the wonderful introduction. Um, good afternoon, Dr. Gilmore, Penn College faculty, family, friends, and of course, the graduating class of 2017. This whole thing is still a little surreal for me. Um, the last thing I really expected would, was to be standing here in front of everyone and giving the speech for graduation. Uh, when I got news of my nomination, I was blown away. At the time, I was going through a really hard situation. I was a little down and out on myself and trying to figure out how to restructure my life, how to continue to fight. The announcement for this honor was a rainbow after quite a, quite a rough storm. It reminded me that good things are yet to come. So I really want to sincerely thank Chef Frank for the nomination and for the whole board uh, to, that actually went through with this crazy idea. It's truly an honor and a privilege for me to be standing here in front of everyone, and I thank you. Prior to today, I must have been asked at least 100 times if I finished my speech or what it was gonna be about, and I said, no, I, I didn't even really start it. So in typical college fashion, I waited till last minute. <laughs> and, um, you know, please don't judge me. I know everyone here has done it. So the truth is, it's not that I didn't want to write it or anything like that, it's just I didn't know how it was going to go over. I wrote it a million times in my head, and it's, to me, it's very personal. And I also remember that Chef Frank did nominate me, so if it's terrible, he's the blame. <laughs> On a more serious note, some people may know that May is Mental Health Month. What that means is during the month of May, awareness is brought to mental illnesses like depression and addiction in hopes of helping people that suffer, or at least generating awareness. This topic is near and dear to my heart. At age 15, I lost my aunt's depression. It devastated me. It was during this time I swore to myself I would never consider taking that route. I saw the damage it did to me and my family, and at the age of 15, you feel completely helpless. I later realized it's not the age that makes you feel helpless, it's the tragedy. Everyone around you is helpless. There's nothing anyone can do that can change what happened. There's no going back, and there's no answers to the what ifs. Prior to coming to school here, I spent eight years in the Marine Corps. During that time, I worked with, for, and trained a lot of great Marines. We are said to be the toughest of the tough, the tip of the spear, the first to fight, and many more less classy things. But on average, 22 veterans choose to stop fighting every day, and Marines are part of this statistic. Last year, I received a call that one of my Marines, a young man that had limitless potential, became one of, 20, one of those 22 that day. He fought depression for a long time, and on that day, depression won. But this isn't about them. This is about all of us here, everyone graduating. Today is the opening ceremony to our lives. This is where our future begins. And on this path, we're gonna face many obstacles and many challenges. We will have our ups, our downs, our successes and our failures. And quite honestly, we need both. It's getting knocked down that teaches us how to fight. It's our failures that show us where we need to improve. If you're struggling through a storm in your life, keep your head up. It's the only way you're gonna see that rainbow, I know. And if you feel like you're on rock bottom, that's great, because the only way you can go is up. As Former students of the business and hospitality school, at least most of us here, some of us, 
Um, we know that a knife is not sharpened on a soft surface. It takes pressure and steel to really create a sharp edge. As people, it's our struggles, it's our hard times that sharpen us. Fighting through our problems and overcoming obstacles and challenges, that is our steel. To improve implies that we were once less than what we are right now, and every day we should strive for improvement. I guess what I'm really saying is to fight and never give up. Tough times will come, and despite how they feel, or how it feels when you're in them, you can't choose to give up, because once you do, there's no going back. Look around you. We're all here together, side by side, in celebration of our accomplishment. We've already been through a fair share of trials and tribulations, and we made it. We fought on. We didn't give up. In times, the path ahead may seem lonely, that you know we are by ourselves, and giving up is the best option. But we're not alone. Let today be proof of that. Look around, you know, and um, there is someone here that cares about you and wants you to keep fighting. It could be family or friends that came here for you today. It could be the person sitting next to you right now, or it could be a member of the faculty that helped you accomplish your goal. If none of these apply to you, I want you to keep fighting, and I'll be here for you. Not for me, but for you. But no one knows what you're going through unless you ask for help. So please, if you need it, ask. It's never too late. Keep on fighting. We have your back. In closing, I'm truly honored to be given this opportunity. And if what I said impacted at least one person, then I'm even more grateful for this honor. Congratulations, class of 2017. You guys are awesome. Semper Fidelis. For more than a century now, at Penn College and our historic forerunners, teaching has been the heart of our mission and our national success. Just as our students supply boundless curiosity and energy, our instructors and professors provide peerless guidance and know-how. For their essential role in that educational give and take, members of our full-time faculty chosen and inspiring exemplars in our laboratories and classrooms are honored each May through distinguished teaching awards. By the end of this weekend's ceremonies, three faculty members will have joined the ranks of those who have been selected over the past 35 years. J.D. Mather, Associate Professor of Engineering Design and Technology, was honored on Friday afternoon as our newest master teacher. And Nicholas Stevenson, instructor in graphic design, received the first of this weekend's two Excellence in Teaching Awards in that same ceremony. It is my honor this afternoon to present our second Excellence in Teaching Award. And while it always does not go as we planned, we try to keep these awards secret as long as possible. So I will try to pro provide some detail, keeping out some specific facts, to see if we can keep the surprise just a few minutes longer. These are quotes about today's honoree. Quite helpful in grooming me to be a good teacher, a good resource and always willing to help. Quite analytical, carefully looking at our entire program curriculum, initiating continuous review, discussion, and change to further benefit and serve our students provides that first impression that is so important as a faculty representative in recruiting new students, confronts the challenge of how to maintain our high standards and retain our students, a great role model and sensitive to students' needs. She has done numerous demonstrations, always involving including students on WBRE TV's PA Live. I'm guessing she's figuring out who it is now. 
A member of the Penn College faculty since 1990, she holds a degree from this very institution, as well as a bachelor's degree from Widener University and a master's degree from Wilkes University. This, year's, this afternoon's honoree has a workload that involves first-year students as well as seniors, seeing them both at the beginning and at the end of their time at Penn College. So as another academic year comes to an end, another group of graduates proudly across this stage, it is fitting that they will share the spotlight with her. It is my personal honor to present the second of our 2017 Excellence in Teaching Awards to Mary Trometer, Assistant Professor of Hospitality. special day. Um, you know, this is kind of dangerous to get a faculty member and give I, I them know. a podium. I know. Okay. Um, I do, I do want to thank you. I know this takes a lot of time um, to go through the nomination process. I'm looking at the word excellence here um, on the award, and I know that uh, among our uh, faculty, we don't take that word excellence lightly. Um, we spend many hours talking what defines excellence, um, how how can we award excellence, and of course, as as an instructor, we learn about assessment of excellence, and it's uh, elusive at times. So, I do um, I do feel very pri privileged to have this award as an excellence in teaching. Um, if you look behind me, some of the most excellent people are here today uh, that have mentored me and, and taught me uh, a great deal about teaching and about uh, being a better human being. So uh, thank you, and this wouldn't be a culinary moment uh, without something. So I will say to the hospitality people, our students in hospitality, homework is 86th. Thank you. Congratulations, Chef Trometer. Ladies and gentlemen, as many of you know, the legal corporate body of the Pennsylvania College of Technology is its board of directors. It is this body that, by our charter, is given the final responsibility for the governance, welfare, and all other interests pertaining to the college. Though some responsibilities are delegated, ultimate authority rests with the board. At this time, I would like to call upon Mr. Mike DeRamo, member of our board of directors, to authorize the conferring of degrees at this ceremony. Mr. DeRamo. This is a very special occasion for all of us, but particularly for our graduating students. The degrees being awarded have come from hard work, from the guidance and wisdom of your family members and from the faculty and their strong support. On behalf of the Board of Directors, I extend to all the graduates our congratulations and best wishes. And to all supporting family members, faculty, and friends, I extend our thanks for your support. Now I turn to my official duty, Dr. Gilmore. By virtue of the authority vested in the Board of Directors of the Pennsylvania College of Technology, I authorize you on behalf of the Board to confer on each of these candidates the degrees earned as certified by the appropriate school dean. Will the candidates for the Bachelor of Science degree please rise? Dr. Gilmore, upon the recommendation of the faculty, I'm very pleased to inform you that these women and men have satisfactorily completed the requirements for the Bachelor of Science degree. By virtue of the authority vested in me by the Board of Directors of the Pennsylvania College of Technology, I do hereby confer upon you 
your Bachelor of Science degrees that you have earned with all of their rights and privileges, and with congratulations from the Board of Directors, the faculty, and the administration. Congratulations. You may be seated. Will all the candidates for all associate degrees and certificates please rise? <laughs> Dr. Gilmore, upon the recommendation of the faculty, I'm pleased to inform you that these men and women have satisfactorily completed the requirements for their respective associate degrees and certificates. By virtue of the authority vested in me by the Board of Directors of the Pennsylvania College of Technology, I do hereby confer upon you your associate degrees and certificates that you have earned with all of their rights and privileges and with congratulations from the Board of Directors, the administration, and the faculty. Congratulations. Please remain standing. Would all candidates please, please rise? rise. Ladies and gentlemen, you entered this theater some time ago as candidates for the degrees and certificates that you have been awarded. As a symbol of your entry into the educated world of women and men, I'm going to ask you to turn your class tassel, turn your tassel as I turn the tassel of your class representative. This will symbolize to the world that you are in fact now graduates of the Pennsylvania College of Technology. may be seated. As individuals and institutions, we all pass through clear stages of development, points in time where we grow in new roles and new responsibilities. This ceremony is a tra transition event for all of our graduates. Today, we will recognize individuals with academic honors. Outstanding academic achievement will be recognized for all students. The gold, silver, or white cords that students wear during these ceremonies will help guide you. White for honors, silver for high honors, and gold for highest honors will identify these students. Blue cords will signify academic achievement for our certificate students. In addition, we are proud to recognize the graduates who are members of Phi Theta Kappa. Their gold stoles and gold tassels will help identify them. And we are equally proud to recognize the members of Alpha Chi, and their white stoles will identify them. We would now like to recognize our veteran students, identified by red, white, and blue cords, who are graduating, including those who served in active duty as well as currently serving in all branches of the military. Would our veteran students please stand? If you remain standing, I'd like to tell you a little bit about our veteran students at Penn College. One of them has a purple heart, two have bronze stars, 24 Iraq campaign medals, and 39 Afghanistan campaign medals. We are very proud of our veterans. <laughs> seated. At this time, Dr. Carolyn Strickland, Vice President for Enrollment Management and Associate Provost, and the respective school representatives will present each candidate, where Mr. Duramo and I will present the diplomas to them. And our ceremony now begins. We know you'd like to capture this and whatever type of device you have with you. We simply ask that you leave the area in front of the official photographer open so that they may capture the film. And with that, our ceremony begins. Thank you.
President Gilmore, I present the graduates of Business Administration, Banking and Finance Concentration, and Accounting within the School of Business and Hospitality. Morgan E. Blackwell. <laughs> Stephanie J. Mashad. <laughs> Elizabeth P. Osborne. <laughs> Thomas Gordon Ross. <laughs> Ryan Everett Schwab. Eric Conrad Anderson. Sarah A. Mangiello. Stephen C. Shuck. President Gilmore, I present the graduates of Culinary Arts and Systems Baking and Pastry Arts, Culinary Arts Technology, and Hospitality Management within the School of Business and Hospitality. Sarah Ann Brunsky. <laughs> Pierce Alexander Connolly. <laughs> Saray D. Davis. Sarah B. Fiedler. Caitlin Joyce Hackling. Cy Charles Heller. Randall Colby Janowitz. Zachary Alexander Knoll. <laughs> Lindsay Elise Maynard. <laughs> Alyssa J. Morales. <laughs> Andrew M. Scheidel. Caitlin Mary Watson. Crystal Ann Callaman. Nathan Diaz. Alexis Lee Kepley. Danielle Marie McGuire. Paige Aaron Pearson. Natasha Gabriella Santayaheka. Natasha Gabriella Santayaheka. Natasha Gabriella Santayaheka. <laughs> Lloyd Allen Shope. <laughs> Andrea Lauren Sollenberger. Keegan Dale Sunny. Jenny Elizabeth Zarkovsky. Adeline Ann Zimmerman. Arden Francis Campbell. Althea G. Swartz. Ariel E. White. President Gilmore, I'm proud to present the graduates of the paralegal program from the School of Business and Hospitality. Thank you. Alyssa Ann Ackley. <laughs> Stacy Lynn Dabney. Amber Rose Fleming. 
Keith A. Miller. James Stewart Susenbach. Dr. Gilmore, it's my honor to present to you the graduates in business and management, the School of Business and Hospitality. Olivia Lee Arland Bollock. <laughs> Brian Darren Buxton. <laughs> Michael A. Campbell. <laughs> Daniel Carnegie Frankenfield. <laughs> Kayla Ann Gross. Sean Matthew Hunter. <laughs> Timothy Lamar Kuntz. <laughs> Thomas Vincent Stark. <laughs> Kristen Elizabeth Swartz. <laughs> Alec Carey Becker. <laughs> Christopher Joseph Herman. Benjamin John Leskovansky. <laughs> Daniel Everlyn Blaine. <laughs> Iris Elizabeth De Pasquale. <laughs> Alyssa Lynn Fink. <laughs> Noah James Miller. Jeremy David Rawl. Matthew John Schwartz. Brandon M. Soha. Molly Elizabeth Stein. Jackson Holt Tate. Greg Allen Thomas. <laughs> Megan Lee Dosh. <laughs> Sean P. Kelly. <laughs> Aziz O. Salu. <laughs> Sean Patrick Woods. Ryan Michael Person. <laughs> Kevin James Peterman. <laughs> Kimberly Van Emmen. President Gilmore, it is my honor to present the graduates of web and interactive media within the School of Business and Hospitality. Mitchell J. Berninger. <laughs> Colleen Elizabeth Bowes. <laughs> Kristen E. Bowes. <laughs> Grace Frances Clark. <laughs> Rebecca Marie Gardner. Gabriella W. Hernandez. Lana Adele Kephart. Robert L. Sloss. Jeffrey A. Stanley. Brittany Rose Terpstra. Devin T. Tucker. Delaney T. Vartnesian.
President Gilmore, I present the graduates of Automotive Technology Management, Automotive Technology Ford Asset Emphasis, Automotive Technology Honda Pact Emphasis, Automotive Technology Mopar Cap Emphasis, and Automotive Technology within the School of Transportation and Natural Resources Technologies. Douglas H. Binney. Nicholas Ryan Dibler. Ronald A. Ferrari. Kyle John Himmelwright. Nicholas Wayne Holland. Devin Ryan Luce. Emmanuel Polanco. Carlos Alberto Ramos Sonera. Hamza M. Salim. Ian Charles Squire Nauman. Jackson S. Walker. Nathan L. Jacoby. Jason T. Leitner. James M. Murphy. Darius M. Ramos. Jackson Daniel Taylor. Grant M. Fawzi. Patrick C. Frazier. Ian Joseph Schoenlaber. William U. Bryson. J. S. Frizzano. Corey J. Snyder. Corey J. Snyder. <laughs> Patrick H. Turner. <laughs> Zachary David Warren. <laughs> Kayla D. Wilson. <laughs> Nicholas Robert Aiello. Jordan Z. Buzzard. Jabrell Conte. Eric L. Dietz. Jonathan Michael Draculis. Todd Alexander Everts. Yeah. Jody Dalton Langall. <laughs> Kieran S. McDonald. <laughs> Colin M. Mott. <laughs> Patrick Michael Murphy. Alexander E. Penn. Query. Neil M. Query. <laughs> Stephen Andrew Schmouter. Weston James Sheehan. Chandler Aaron Thompson. James Thomas Wade. Scott J. Wagner. Robert er, Richard M. Where's Vicky McMickle? 
Garrett Lee Woofinger. President Gilmore, I present the graduates of Aviation Maintenance Technology within the School of Transportation and Natural Resources Technologies. Jacob E. Barczyk. <laughs> Brian Michael Bame. <laughs> Timothy P. Byler. Aaron Casadas. Simeon, Simeon R. DeBarros. Simeon R. DeBarros. <laughs> Ryan Killian Ebbett. <laughs> Emily May Ritt. <laughs> Nicholas Charles Rizzuto. Andrew Robert Rupp. Yeah. Trevor Allen Schaefer. Yeah. Alexander D. Stashik. Yeah. Tanner A. Stott. Yeah. Kevin Matthew Varghese. President Gilmore, I present the graduates of Automotive Restoration Technology, Collision Repair Technology within the School of Transportation and Natural Resources Technologies. Jacob Taylor Motley. <laughs> Alex M. Levan. <laughs> Matthew Allen Rebman. Preston Tucker Rose. Eric M. Santiago. Jason C. Wade. Nicholas Allen D. Domenico. Brittany Ann Fry. Hunter Ann Fioti. Raymond Michael Panaccio. President Gilmore, I present the graduates of Diesel Technology, Heavy Construction Equipment Technology, Caterpillar Equipment Emphasis, Operator Emphasis, Technician Emphasis, and On-Site Power Generation, all within the School of Transportation and Natural Resource Technologies. Thomas A. Baker. Corrado. Dominic Vincent Corrado. Patrick Ryan Ezek. Colton Michael Gall. Jacob B. Geyer. Grant C. Heishman. Dustin Lee Hopkins. Christian S. Hugar. Raymond Michael Loveland. Hunter M. Mosser. Dexter Reese Marr. Troy Benjamin McBride. Jordan Joseph Palera. Justin Michael Pangrazzi. Hunter P. Richards. Spencer D. Roof. 
Shane Lewis Ryder. Michael Jason Salfrank. Richard P. Scanlon. Chad R. Schneider. Adam L. Smith. Chad Mitchell Snyder. Robert J. Strauss. Bradley F. Tintel. Philip Mark Valenti. Jonathan L. Zeckman. William F. Bechtold. Kevin G. Hyder. Joshua A. Hunt. Gregory Allen Moore, Jr. Patrick Russell Woods. Tyler Michael Breon. Matthew R. Folk. Logan Wayne Fox. Andrew T. Haynes. Matthew L. Hilliard. Lucas Austin Height. Ryan James McCammon. Travis James Ressler. Austin Cooper Slother. Caleb D. Wallingford. Aaron Nicholas Walensky. Alexander James Antosca. Eric Anthony Belito. Benjamin Paul Coppola. Paul Stephen Cron. Chandler Pierce Gebauer. Mitchell Aaron Mayfield. Nicholas J. Rausch. Nicholas Todd Sebasovich. Andrew M. Shane. Nicholas Lister Sutcliffe. Curtis A. Karakner. Jacob K. Cook. William N. Miller. Nicholas G. Poulton. Joshua Kevin Vilko. President Gilmore, I present the graduates of Forest Technology within the School of Transportation and Natural Resources Technology. Matthew R. Barth Bartholomew. Jacob Marlin Fetzer. Haley E. Fink. Jordan D. Frank. Benjamin T. H. Riesinger. Okay, 
President Gilmore, I present the graduates of Landscape Horticultural Technology, Landscape Emphasis, and Plant Production Emphasis within the School of Transportation and Natural Resources Technologies. Logan H. Booth. Robert Austin Berger. Brandon Todd Graby. Tiffany Elizabeth Griffey. <laughs> Kyle Edward Kern. <laughs> Peter R. Mitchell. <laughs> M. Tanner Reef. <laughs> yep. Justin Michael Reinheimer. Ashton N. Rockwell. Yep. Matthew Dean Schaefer. Noah L. English. <laughs> Natasha Taylor Harkey. Kellen J. Mosser. And Robert E. Wood. Your connection to the college does not end today. As graduates, you're now members of the Penn College Alumni Association, and the Alumni Association is the main link between you and your alma mater. It's important that we hear about your successes and keep in touch with what you're doing in the world of work. So we look forward to welcoming you back to campus for alumni events and having you keep in touch and keep your contact information up to date. In about six months, you're going to get a survey from us. It's called the Graduate Survey, and it's a really important one that helps us assess what we're doing and how to do it better. So I would encourage you to return the survey with the accurate information. You know, there are two young men who couldn't be here today to get their diplomas. So it's only fitting that I tell you that the Penn College baseball team is up four to one. And if all goes well, and we can make the timing work, we're going to be presenting some diplomas at the baseball field. <laughs> this is the part of the day that's most important to me on a personal level. I get to be the last person to talk to you graduates before you leave and go out into the work world. And for many years, I took time to write some remarks and then one day, a couple of things happened during commencement that made me throw away those remarks and speak from the head and the heart. So for the past few years, I've not written any remarks and counted on something happening to sort of inspire me. I will tell you this afternoon, it was Robert Wood. There have been many articles written about what college presidents think about during commencement. Um, and some of them are pretty crazy. Like earlier today, when the Health Sciences School graduated, I confess to tell you that I think about shoes. <laughs> and the reason is that no matter what we tell them, they wear the highest heels humanly made. <laughs> and so I sit over here and I stand here with the member of the board of directors wondering what year we will catch somebody as they try to rush off the stage. You know, one year, uh, earlier today, we had board member John Young with us, 
And his last visit, so I was hoping it wasn't an omen, someone took the diploma and jumped up on this diploma table and did a backflip. No. Number one, we're forever grateful that the table held because it had the rest of the diplomas on it. And number two, nobody was hurt, including my heart that started beating again. <laughs> you know, last year, one of the interesting, most interesting things happened, and lots of people behind me already know this story, and the platform's now heard it three times so they can memorize it. But Mr. Duramo and I have the hardest job. We, we stand, and Dr. Strickland, we stand through the whole ceremony. So as we were coming down to get ready, Last year in May, I sat down on the bench, well, maybe it was August, I sat on the bench for just like two more minutes of sitting before I had to stand. And this nice young man walked over to me and he said, congratulations. <laughs> he said, it is wonderful to see someone your age graduating from college. <laughs> it really happened, <laughs> it really did. And I'm not very often speechless, but I said, thank you. <laughs> Wasn't quite sure what else to say. So I walked over to the provost, and the chairman of the board was there that day, and I said, what do you think he's going to do when the provost introduces me in the audience as the president? And the conclusion was likely he was going to get up and walk out. Someone said, you should go find him and have your picture taken with him, and I'm guessing that wasn't going to be on top of his list. But I'll be honest with you, about 30 seconds later, I thought about how awesome it would be for a non-traditional student to get that kind of feedback. And it reminded me what's special about Penn College. Everyone can be successful here. In this room today, there are students who came right out of high school, probably couldn't find their way around for the first week, and now they sit before you as graduates. There are veterans who came to us right out of the military. They also couldn't find their way around the classroom, we know that. But they had each other, they had our veterans office, and they were made to feel welcome. And we've had non-traditional students. One student walked across the stage today and told me that he graduated at my first commencement as president. And they were welcome here. And then you have students like Robert Wood, who touch you in places that you never thought possible. And you realize that this is the best deal there is, to have the opportunity to interact with these men and women in the ways that the talented faculty behind me have. And I'm not sure you realize that we will be forever changed for our time with you. You may not know the time, you may not remember the interaction, but we will. So the best thing I can tell you is to make a difference in the world. Mark Twain said it best, I think, when he said, 20 years from now, you will be more discouraged by what you did not do than what you did do. So his advice is to throw off the bow lines, sail away from your safe harbors, catch the trade winds in your sails, explore, dream, and discover. And we're going to add to that, please make us Penn College proud because we are very proud of you. Congratulations. I invite those who are able to stand. Gentlemen, please remove your caps and everyone to join in the singing of the Penn College alma mater. The words may be found on page two of your program. Yeah. All right, Roy, kick us off here. Nestled in our 